Hello, everybody. I'm Bradford. And I'm Bradford. <laughs> and this is Spooky Time with Bradford and Bradford. Today we are uh, we're breaking away from our usual format where we meticulously grade every aspect of, of spookiness and, and filmmaking, uh, because today we are talking about uh, a film on Netflix called His House. And, uh, and I was really moved by a lot of this film. And even though it does fit into a traditional kind of haunted house horror movie, uh, in, a, in a lot of ways, it's a very different kind of film. At least for me, it, it uh, ends with a, a very powerful emotional impact. And so I wanted to talk with my fellow Bradford uh, about not only what was spooky, but also what was meaningful, powerful, fascinating, maybe confusing, uh, and just get, get our responses from it. So uh, without further ado, Bradford, would you please tell us what you thought of the film His House? Yeah, um, I mean, it's been a while since we watched it because we found on the LiDAR, but um, the thing that sticks out in my memory the most, um, even though it's like very important uh, thoughts and ideas to have, is honestly the imagery um, mm. and the way that was used. It was very like stark, original images that were like kind of burned into my brain, not in a spooky way, but like... Mm -hmm in a cool way. Um, Speaking yeah. of cool imagery, I have to say, I've just noticed maybe it's the lighting there, but you look like a young Severus Snape and I and I like the look that you have going on. Thank you. You can keep that in the video so, it's like, so people think I'm cool. Harry Potter. <laughs> Is that good? Anyway, uh, so Bull and uh, I think it's one me. Mosaku uh, plays. Do you remember her name? Is it called? Is it real? 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 Ryle? I think. Ryle, maybe. So we have the characters Bull and Ryle, if I'm pronouncing them correctly. And they are uh, refugees from South Sudan. And they are given a place to live. They're given refugee status after months of of being basically waiting in a compound in England. And then they are given a small place in what I believe is, is somewhere in London. Uh, so I would love to first chat, before we get into this, the spooky stuff, uh, I, I'd love to know your thoughts on, um, on, on the place with which they live and the, the institution that's involved. Here's Matt Smith playing uh, a character named Mark, who's basically in charge of giving them uh, this housing unit and, uh, and basically saying, hey, do, you know, stay out of trouble, don't, don't work. Uh, hopefully you're one of the good ones. Um, so what, what was your first impression of, of the film as to um, how refugee life is depicted and maybe more importantly, uh, how the British government is responding to this, uh, this inflow of, of refugees? Um, you can kind of see that because Bull gets kind of this this glimpse of like fitting in in a positive light, he leans mm -hmm. into that as hard as he can. Um, and he wants to be a part of this community no matter what it takes, no matter what he's leaving behind. And since um, Rial is kind of not on the same page she like experiences like a lot of unsafe situations and even though like obviously there's both of these um experience for everyone since that's their first impression of this um new country that they're in that's kind of what their gut sticks to and real mm -hmm. really wants to protect her culture and uh protect her identity and not Okay. Um, assimilate in the same way Bull does, um, but yeah, those are those are my thoughts. Does it does by the ending? Does it feel like there's compromise involved, or are we more on her? He's got a lot of baggage that we're going to unpack a little bit, and she, I think, is definitely the hero. But um, but is there is there compromise at the end? What do you think? 
I think so. I, I, I mean, personally watching it, I felt like Rial was more in the right and like the way she's thinking, especially mm -hmm. like just from like a straight up horror perspective, like how she mm -hmm. treated the, the spirit or spirits yeah. in the house. Like it just, it just felt like more of the right thing to do. But I think it is just too, um, people with two ways of um, processing trauma and mm -hmm. grief and like getting to a stage where they're, um, they, they've accepted a yeah. stage of acceptance. Let's talk a little bit about the, <laughs> the scary aspects, right? So this is, that's a pretty horrifying image, right? So there's scary images. There's this, there's, there's a monster. Ooh. Right? So we've got, and, and and in this scene, by the way, we're going to start talking about spoilers now. So, so we've been spoiler free, I think, so far, but uh, now we're going to talk about spoilers. So if you're if you're watching this and you haven't seen his house, you might want to stop watching our video so you can watch watch his house. Uh, there's creepy parts. What what was scary to you? Um, or was there any I... part where it was like made you jump, made you made you gasp? Um, it was more of like um, a gradual building of unease the whole time, which I thought mm -hmm. was cool, um, especially with the kind of theme of something's in the wall. You know, like maybe human, yeah. seaweed, figure it out. And um, yeah, there's there's weird weird growing, things that's like, falling out of the wall. Yeah, that's like sort of etching um, into the wall and also away at uh, Bull's sanity. <laughs> kind of like the, you know, uh, I was comparing it to the Babadook with you earlier before we started filming, is that uh, that you can see this is very symbolic I instead of worrying about like, ooh, what's the what kind of spell do they need to do to to get the monsters away? Uh, you can kind of see it as as about psychologically healing. Yeah, it really reminded me of um, it. It was scary to me in the same way that The Shining is scary, where it's the combination mm. of like supernatural um, and how that would have like real world consequences if it was yeah. in the real world. Um, so like the the combination of like spirits and also like sanity and what that does, and also yeah. like the theme of the head of a household in air quotes um, changing in some way mm -hmm. um, is, is pretty creepy to me. And it's like a weird, weird uh, power yeah. dynamic and also a feeling of unsafeness in your own house from your own family, which is really cool. Also the, the um, really cool. Hey, hey. hi Rose. <laughs> hi. Um, I think something a little bit coming off of that is the idea that, especially with this and especially with all the things that happen and there's stuff in the house and it's like very real, tangible, horrible things that are happening and they're like, oh God, this is, you know, something horrible that they have to directly deal with. But then realizing at the end, it's really obviously clear that despite the fact that, you know, the spooky, as it were, has been dealt with, the trauma is going to stay residual and the trauma will always be there. And like understanding that there are different phases of working through stuff, the like very present, like this is what I have to do in the moment to survive. Whether it was when, you know, they were immigrating or, you know, with the things in the house and the juxtaposition of then at the end of the movie it being kind of quiet being a little bit more reflective and understanding that there's so much more processing that has to be done and so much of that will affect their lives despite the fact that they like defeated the evil so uh one of the things that i love about this movie and and i guess it's it's the same kind of aspect that i admire in midsommar but it's um, but this one resonated more with me than than Midsommar, um, uh, for for a few reasons. I think because my heart goes out to 
anyone that's in a war torn, you know, a place like South Sudan or any any place that's war torn. Uh, so we're really exploring the refugee experience. Whereas in Mid Samar, it's like we're college kids and we're writing a PhD. And we're, let's go to the strange culture. Uh, but in Mid Samar, we've talked about how uh, the, those college boys are in a horror movie, and and Danny is kind of in a different kind of sort of movie. And and so here we have Ball, uh, the husband character. He's in a horror movie, uh, and, and his wife uh, Rial is is not she's she has this wonderful conversation with her husband when 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 she basically says i'm not why would i be scared why would i be scared of 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 these people that are in our walls when i've i've gone through so much and that's that was the moment where I, one i loved the movie because i was like oh this is intriguing is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? What kind of horror movie is it going to be? And once we ha once we have that conversation about halfway through the film, I was like, this is sort of transcended the horror movie genre for me. Even though it still has the trappings uh, of the horror movie genre, but but I started following her character, and I didn't. Uh, you know, you can see I have these different screen captures, uh, but I I didn't see it in. An accessible screen capture of of uh, Real when she's with when she basically it enters her memories and go right because Ball is going into his past and mixed up with sort of these scary images. Uh, but I did find this. I think there are a lot of beautiful images of South Sudanese women just kind of bonding at schools, colleges, work working together. And so the the moment where she goes back and sees all of her friends and we piece together that like these friends have died like something horrible has happened to her friends and that's why she's so moved to see them again and then she says that um uh she's she basically says i know you're an illusion i know you are you know i know what you are that you're i know you're this ghost that was really moving for me uh, and, and then to see the devastating effect of her having probably survivor's guilt, uh, you know, by being the one person to hide in the in that classroom setting when when her friends are, you know, they're are, are murdered. Uh, so that that was really powerful. What were some of your um, uh, ideas either connected to that or what what were things that surprised you or really moved you um, uh, about Real's character or the husband's character? Yeah, I think it's really interesting um, how each character ends up in like a horror situation. Um, and Rial's, Rial feels more like a grounded character because um, all of her, all of the scary parts of her life are a hundred percent reality mm -hmm. um, because the parts where she's put into uh, terror are like plain old like memories. Mm -hmm. uh, even like when she kind of goes in between, um, she's not scared because she's she's with her friends, even mm -hmm. though it's like a very like creepy environment for the audience because you don't really know what's going on, but she knows yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Um, and so the only um, fear that that is in her story is actual memory, whereas Bull has this, um, they both have mixtures of memory and present, um, but his kind of coagulate into this one beast where there's always that fear, that like terror present, mm. and it's always a mixture of now and then. Yeah. How should we, here's a question for Rose, since, since we got our special guest Rose here. Um, how should we judge the husband? I'm trying to remember what my like initial reactions were because I think all of us had that initial reaction of like oh I think god. all of us were going oh it's like oh my god are you kidding how could he do like god that's yeah. horrific like it's it's horrible but I <sighs> I remember talking about like talking because we all three watched the movie together but during the movie we're like well. 
you know, you should have, you could have saved a child, but if you had the parent, you should have stopped the bus once you saw that she had a parent there and like talking about all the things. We're, that, we're going through the moral the responsibilities. There that, were like, people issues. shooting like. Yeah. Yeah. And like understand, and that, I mean, just comparing to that, I think that because I've watched the ritual twice now, like the first time I was like, man, you know, I didn't do anything, but what, I mean, what was he supposed to do? Like there are so many and, and not to be like, let's talk about trauma again, but I did read a book. It's called The Body Keeps the Score. It's really, really cool. And it's very informing of this movie. I think it did a really, really good job of like, the body is the most traumatized when there is a situation in which your survival or your bodily autonomy or anything is threatened and you're threatened and you can't get out. So whether that's like you're in a car crash and you couldn't do anything about it, whether that you were abused as a child and you couldn't do anything about it, it's that feeling of being trapped and doing everything you possibly could to get out and to do the right thing and still not it not working out. And I think right. that's what happened with the kid too. It's just like, this was a situation in which there was, he I'm sure was just like, I mean, ultimately what you need to do is get out. That's the goal. That's the only focus is your survival. So if you're taking a kid yeah. and you're like, okay, well, if I have this kid, then I can get on and yeah. this kid will be safe too and, you know, protect them. And even, you know, after the, the boat, where I'm not quite exactly sure what happened. It was the same sort of situation where it's like, it's just about survival. It's the really, really basic human instinct. And I think the husband's relationship with, the witch and the wife's relationship with the witch are very indicative of the ways in which they experience experience that experience and how they see it now. Because I think with her, she is understanding and accepting. Because immediately she's like, oh, this is what's happening. Like, I'm for sure this is what's happening. And like, this is what we did to have this be wrong. And this is why this is happening. And this is the consequence that's happening from that. And yeah. like, obviously she's still stressed about it, but she has a more deep understanding and perhaps a little bit more of a control over the situation where as with him, I think that he has a more troubled relationship with what happened and struggles with it a lot more and tries to put distance from what happened and what it ends up being worse for him because mm. he's putting that distance, he's not dealing with it. He's trying to assimilate. He's trying to get away from his culture, understanding that like, that's exactly what you have to do. And that's what, I mean, that's what they say in every like trauma book ever, like to get mm -hmm. over horrible things that happen to you, you have to face them. You cannot run away from them. And I think that that, it, it felt like a physical manifestation. And I, it, the things that happened in the witch and it just feels just like a physical manifestation of their emotions of something really horrible happening to them. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, here's the last, uh, I think, then, hauntingly yeah. beautiful image, right? Oh, this is what I remember. Just like talking about, th okay, this exact thing was what I was talking about when I was talking about her acknowledging and accepting the history and realizing yeah. that all of these people and all of these like memories are going to stay with her because they're all there in the house, yeah. like with her. <sighs> yeah. Okay. That, yeah. <laughs> right. Good stuff. Well, this has been Spooky Time with Bradford and Bradford. And of course, it's also been. Oh, there it is. Hey. It's also been Time with Rose. <laughs> love it. Love it. All, All right. We're signing off. Say goodbye. Bye.